Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas from KitGuru and today I'll be taking a look at a new behemoth cooler from Asus, the ROG Ryogen 360 AIO liquid cooler. So to start things off, let's tackle the price. At £249.95, it's not, by no means a budget solution and actually one of the dearer AIO coolers I have come across. This being said, its intention to tackle the high-end AIO cooling market is very evident. Firstly, it follows a very similar construction to previous coolers from, say, Corsair, as it is produced by Acertech, along with a really heavily redesigned CPU block. Secondly, it features a full array of Noctua fans, Noctua being a somewhat benchmark for, uh, for performance fans. It's great to see that, uh, rather than go at this alone, Asus have elected to consult a leader in the field to achieve, hopefully, great performance. Now the all-in-one cooler market has become a little bit stagnant. Uh, primarily this is because once you tackle the quality of the components, uh, the AIO's pump and fan say for instance, and hit the peak performance that can be achieved with things like radiator dimensions, uh, there is very little that can actually be improved. There is some scope to make improvements via LED or RGB lighting, a route most manufacturers tend to follow, but Asus elects to try and push performance even further. This can be seen through the inclusion of the specifically all Noctua fans, uh, nice to see that they are all black variants here, and a small 1.7 inch OLED screen for system details and other cool stuff as well. The CPU block also features a small 60mm embedded fan to help with VRM and M.2 cooling. Uh, basically any components closely mounted around the CPU area will likely benefit from this additional airflow. There is a small amount of RGB lighting as well, although maybe not to the same degree as some other coolers. The Noctua fans don't include LED lighting, but the CPU block does feature a small strip of addressable RGB LEDs, uh, just enough to help you tie in the cooler into your system's color scheme. The feature list is pretty impressive, and it certainly looks like Asus have tried to include every possible addition to improve performance and add value, and it will be interesting to see how the ROG Ryogen 360 performs. Taking a look at the packaging, it feels almost like a higher tier, more premium Asus ROG motherboard. I must admit I got a little bit carried away with uh, removing the outer packaging on this review sample and actually scored the top of the box which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but opening the box reveals the cooler along with a ton of accessories. Not only do you receive the cooler itself but also a CPU block cover plate to make everything look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, three of the aforementioned Noctua fans and a host of mounting hardware for all current Intel and AMD mounts and some basic documentation, uh, warranty and installation details. All of the necessary cables for powering fans, LEDs and the included screen are all built directly into the CPU block itself, uh, which is really cool to see and should help with ease of installation. Taking a quick look at the cooler, the CPU block is quite large, which is understandable considering the pump's embedded fan and the screen, uh, but it's not crazy big and unlikely to have any clearance issues. It is 70 millimeters tall, which might be a, an issue for slightly smaller form factor cases, uh, but it's unlikely you would consider a 360 millimeter cooler in say an MITX build. The radiator comes in at 394 by 121 by 27 millimeters, uh, pretty standard for a 360 rad, and the tubing is both sleeved for reinforcement and cleaner aesthetics, and about 38 centimeters long, plenty of length to mount at the top or front of even a much larger case. The Noctua fans are specifically the NFF12 IPPC 2000 PWM models, all blacked out, even the rubber isolation mounts are black, which is great to see, and as the name suggests, they have a range of 450 to 2000 RPM. The included CPU block cover is plastic and features a number of large vented sections to help with airflow around the CPU area. There are a couple of strong magnets built into the block itself, which secure this cover really well, and once in place, it's unlikely it will just fall off. Moving on to the installation, as the Ryogen 360 is manufactured by Acertech, anyone who's had a go at an earlier Corsair or even an NZXT cooler will find the process an absolute breeze. The bracket for Intel mounts comes pre-attached to the CPU block, and as we test on the Z170 platform, there is little to do in terms of preparation. The plastic backplate needs to be very slightly adjusted to fit your socket, and then put in place at the rear of the motherboard. 
Four double threaded standoffs can then be screwed into each of the four corners of the socket. Thermal paste does come pre-applied, however this was of course removed and replaced to ensure consistency in our testing. Uh, so following backplate installation, you simply place the CPU block over your CPU and firmly mount it with the four included thumb nut screws. Connecting everything up does require a little bit more work. There are three PWM 4-pin connections, uh, one for each of the fans, a SATA power connection and a further 4-pin connection which runs to your motherboard. An internal USB header connection is also here to allow software control of not only the fan and pump speeds, uh, but also the OLED screen. A full complement of long and small radiator and fan mounting screws are also included. Uh, use of these, of course, will depend on how you intend to mount the radiator in your case. Overall installation is pretty simple and only took me about 10 minutes or so to get everything set up. It's also worth noting that all three fans were connected directly to our motherboard CPU fan header, uh, again to maintain consistency with our existing test results. With everything powered up and ready to go, uh, we can take a look at how well the ROG Ryogen 360 performs. At KitGuru we have recently updated our testing setup and now test temperatures on the slightly more recent Z170 platform. Uh, for the CPU we are testing with an Intel Core i7-7700K installed in an Asus Z170 Pro gaming motherboard. For RAM we use a single 8GB stick of Guile Evo X RGB for some added bling and that's running at 3200MHz. Storage is handled by a 120GB SanDisk SSD+. Powering our bench is of course a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650W PSU. When testing we take a number of readings both with the i7-7700K's turbo locked and overclocked to 4.5GHz. The temperatures taken are delta T values, meaning we subtract the ambient temperature from the CPU temperature. More details of our full testing methodology can be found on kitguru.net. So, onto the results. With the 7700K locked in at 4 GHz, the Ryogen 360 performed actually pretty admirably, coming in at 4th at full load, uh, but with a very minimal difference between 4th and 1st place. This is still really impressive. At 8.1 degrees at idle, it was a little bit warmer, but again, only a minor difference of three or so degrees compared to our best in test, the Corsair Hydro Series H100i. Moving on to our 4.5 gigahertz overclock, the Ryzen 360 still retains that fourth place position alongside the Ryzen Tech Orcus 240 at about 55 degrees. Idling at 10 degrees is also great to see. Overall temperatures are really solid, but our noise testing does provide a bit more detail as to what's actually going on. The Ryogen 360 came in at 44.5 dBA with our 7700K overclocked and under full load, which has it only being surpassed by the Arctic Liquid Freezer 240 and larger air coolers. This is actually really impressive considering the higher number of fans, not only the three fans of course mounted to the radiator, but also the much smaller 60mm CPU block fan. Basically the Ryogen 360 is still providing great cooling performance without sacrificing additional noise, uh, which is actually really cool to see. There is of course a lot of scope to adjust fan speeds and set up profiles as the Ryogen 360 is supported through software, specifically through Asus's AI suite. This also allows you to overclock and provides a bunch more information details on system performance, but in the interest of testing noise levels and VRM temps, I basically just focused on the 60mm CPU block fan. During our standard testing, audible noise was great at 44.5 dBA and the 60mm fan was actually barely audible. Checking VRM temps during testing with our 4.5 GHz overclock, uh, VRM temps set around 53 degrees, which is absolutely fine, uh, but ramping the 60mm fan to full speed did see a significant decrease in temperatures down to 36 degrees on the VRM. Asus do claim that this fan helps to cool VRM and M.2 areas by around about 20 degrees, which was basically the case in my testing. However, the 60mm fan at full chat was significantly louder and way more noticeable. At 52.7 dBA, the cooler tested way louder than any other cooler tested so far, with the exception of the Cryorig A80, uh, which also features a smaller 70mm fan mounted to the CPU block. Again, 52.7 dBA was only clocked with the 60mm fan running at maxed out full speed, so in normal operation it's unlikely to reach this noise level. But it's still worth noting, if you are looking to make use of the full potential of the VRM cooling, uh, you can expect much higher noise levels. Now, onto the OLED screen. Uh, to me, it's hard to say whether this is the next be-all and end-all feature for AIO coolers. Initially, it did strike me as a bit gimmicky, but after a few hours of use, I did kind of start to see the potential. 
Firstly, setting up the display with custom images or GIFs, uh, one of the elements most will be interested in, did prove to be a little bit tricky. Firstly, making changes to lighting, images and GIFs is all controlled through a second software suite, LiveDash. This is a little bit disappointing considering it's an extra piece of software to control just one component in your system. LiveDash though does provide a load of customization. Uh, you have a number of effects to choose from uh, for the included addressable RGB LEDs. Uh, modes like static, breathing, strobing, color cycle and rainbow are all present. Options for the OLED screen are also pretty extensive. Firstly, hardware monitoring, which actually works really well. You can set the screen to display a number of core system details like CPU frequencies, uh, voltages and temperatures, as well as individual fan speeds. It would definitely be cool to see temps for components like your graphics card shown here too, uh, but this is something that may come with a future Live Dash update. We'll just have to wait and see. Changing images and GIFs displayed on the screen is certainly easy with the default options. You can select from a number of preset animations and images, as well as adding text to custom banners. Another cool feature is the ability to turn off the screen completely, or even to rotate it 180 degrees. This is pretty cool if your only option for installation requires the CPU block to be mounted upside down. Uploading GIFs of my own proved more troublesome than I had expected. Images works pretty well, uh, but achieving the 160 by 180 pixel format on paper, although seems simple, in practice it proves surprisingly difficult. Without spending hours creating my own GIFs, after trying to load a number of pre-downloaded options, things that I found on Google, uh, the cooler just reverted back to some of the Asus default options. Customization when it comes to your own GIF or images uh, does strike me as something that could be improved, uh, but the OLED being used for displaying system details actually worked really well. Adding additional components would definitely be appreciated though. So to summarize, my overall impression of the Ryogen 360 end up being a little bit mixed. As coolers go, Asus have done a great job of providing a high quality cooler uh, with easy installation and setup and have paired it with top tier Noctua fans, all of which are really strong benefits. The larger 360mm radiator size in testing did also amount to lower temperatures with lower audible noise, uh, which is also a big plus, and technically the included 60mm fan for VRM cooling did achieve the advertised reduction in temperatures, so from a performance standpoint the Ryogen 360 really held up. Unfortunately, my first criticism has to be said for the 60mm fan. At full load it was really irritating, and in instances where I wasn't running any testing, I basically just turned it off completely using AI Suite. Even with the fan turned off, VRM temperatures weren't crazy high, so although it works as advertised, I couldn't really see a huge benefit to this inclusion unless you really intended to max out an overclock, and even then, uh, most I'm sure will find the extra audible noise pretty irritating and will turn the fan off anyway. Software support is fine, although a bit irritating to see that two separate programs um, are required. It would have been really nice to see some integration with the existing AI suite, and although the cooler isn't covered in lights, the addressable RGB LED strips on the top of the block still look pretty cool, and there's easily enough uh, customization to keep you happy in software. The OLED screen works in theory, displaying system details like CPU temps and frequency works really well, and if you're the sort of person who would prefer your system atop your desk, uh, this functionality makes tons of sense. If you don't want the computer on top of your desk, this could be a little bit wasted and it may just be easier to check on this info through software rather than spying inside the case. Customization of the screen I did feel to be a little bit lacking as the requirements are really specific for your own images and GIFs. You will have a hard time just grabbing a bunch online. If this is something that you are really interested in, you will likely need to put together your own images and GIFs to guarantee compatibility. Overall, I would say Asus have done their best to create something new and unique, which is great, but as with anything new, it's likely to come at a higher price, which is the case for the Ryogen 360 at the £249.99 pence price point. Looking at other 360mm coolers, you do seem to be paying quite a premium for the included OLED screen, as other options like the Hydro Series H150i Pro RGB from Corsair come at its almost £100 less for a very similar offering. Sure, you don't get detailed temperature readouts on the block itself, uh, but many software control coolers will have options for displaying variances in CPU temperature uh, through, say, the LED lighting, so similar information just presented differently. The ROG Ryogen 360 is certainly a really cool piece of kit though, and although it's hard for me to say it's the best option for everybody, for those looking for a high performance cooler uh, that does significantly more than just flash a bunch of LEDs on and off, it's definitely worth a look. 
It'll also be really interesting to see how much additional functionality Asus will be able to add to the Ryogen 360's OLED screen over the coming months with future updates. So thanks for checking out this review and first look at the new Asus Ryogen 360 AIO cooler. My first impressions as mentioned were a little bit mixed, uh, but I'd really be interested to hear your thoughts so please leave a comment down below and let us know if too you think this is just a bit of a gimmick or something you would really seriously consider including in your next system build. Make sure to leave a like or dislike, and if you're new to the KitGuru Tech channel, please consider subscribing, uh, making sure to hit the bell icon to receive uh, notifications of new videos. I've been Silas from KitGuru, and I will see you in the next one.